Professor Paul Chuck from England. New York. Buddy uh, Miller. Right? Like, yes. Uh, you're living in New York. Yeah, actually in New York. I'm from Paris. From Paris. All right. France, um, engineer, producer, I don't know, writer as well. Yeah, you write music. Yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah. Actually, the whole make music. music creation yeah. process. Yeah. All right. And uh, I just want to know how did his life might be changed by using a pole? For me, it's a question of uh, ease of use, being able to take two Apollos, put them in a rack with a laptop, and go record anywhere. Uh, so that's very, it's a very simple thing. Uh, it works great, it sounds great. And, uh, so for this song, we just went to Avatar, we recorded a string quartet, we didn't use the console or anything, we just used two Apollos, eight mic trees, all in the box, all in one. So it's very practical, very fast, yeah. um, and it's really, uh, it sounds beautiful, and uh, it's, it's not very expensive, so you can get really high-end quality stuff with not a lot of money. Also makes records on the Apollo, uh, depending on, if, if it's a Pro Tools session, I have a big Pro Tools TDM rate. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes maybe somebody will look, give me his record in Logic or in Cubase, uh, and I have to mix it, and so I use the Apollo, it's easy, it's built in. Yeah. Sometimes I have to mix a record when I'm traveling, so I have an Apollo with a laptop and I mix it all in the box with, yeah. with the Apollo. Sometimes I use something like a D-Box, they just D-Box. But really, the, the beauty of it is to have really good quality conversion for an affordable price and to have the DSP with the plugins, because the plugins are great. Yeah. The plugins are very, very good. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they, they, they did it. They did yeah. the exact... Like, like what you picked up, the, the reverb, ever, that was actually, actually exactly my favorite too. Because, yeah, some, because yeah. Yeah. especially with reverb plugins, people are not so good. In the yeah, process. it's difficult. And, yeah. I have a really EMT. Yeah. I have a I have a lot of real analog reverbs. I have a real EMT 140 plate. I have a real BX20, a real, real BX10. I have a bunch of Ecoplexes. Yeah. And I use the plugins also. They're great. I mean, I, it's it's interchangeable. Yeah, that will be my second question: the marriage of the old equipment, like the API console, and to send cues like to the Apollo. That's pretty amazing. It's, it's fantastic because uh, I have an EMT 140. You don't want to have an EMT 140. It's a pain. It breaks all the time. It's really big and heavy. Um, and the thing that's great about the hardware, the real thing, is you can touch it. It's fast. Uh, it's got a certain interaction with the hardware. It's great. Same Using um, some older machines have weird tones, some of them are a little bit broken, that's why they're fun, you know. Uh, but I use 80. 85 like plugins. The plugin allows right. you to yeah. choose between. Yeah. And there's some there's some reverbs like I have an old uh, EKG spring reverb, uh -huh. and uh, it's got a very special sound. And so I use it for that sound. And there's no plugin for it, so that's why I have that reverb. Yeah. If there was a plugin for it, I probably would use the plugin more often than I use the real one. Well, but the integration is just nice. And the the whole having no latency yeah. is key. That's yeah. why it's possible to work with the Apollo. Yeah. You see on this session I have 140 tracks, 130 plugins, uh, 24 k I'm running HD video, and I'm tracking live. And that's possible. The buffer you can see is probably 1024. And it's only possible because of the Apollo real-time monitoring. Otherwise I could do it. Okay. But thank you. That's it. That's very nice. First to meet you. And, uh, Keep on the good work. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta go do that again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, have a good day.